Hi guys, welcome back to my channel for another book haul. <laughs> Today has been a really wonderful bookish mail day. I got lots of mail today. I got my subscription boxes. I got my last book box that I've been waiting for. Not my last one completely. Just the last one I was actually waiting for. I have two more book outlet boxes coming. One of them is lost in the ether out there, so it may never come. And the other one will be here in like a month. But I'm putting myself on a book buying ban. So unless I absolutely have to have it right now, I'm not buying it. So next month, your book haul will be much smaller until I get back from Europe and then they can start up again. So I'm gonna start with the books that I've been accumulating here and there. Um, I got a couple from here locally and I got a couple in the mail. My sons needed some stuff and so I had like one book per box that they had. And so I'll just kind of work my way through it. So the first book I have is the second Fallen Kingdoms book. I've been looking for this book on Book Outlet for ages because I really wanted to be able to have the whole series. I really want to start it soon. And because I want to start it soon, I went and grabbed the second one. This is again one of those books that I bought because I was buying something else already. But yes, I have been wanting to buy this. So I don't know what Fallen Kingdoms is about really, but all I know is that I was missing this one. So I figured I would get two and then I would just start reading them because I had a good coupon. It was on sale. So I got it for cheap. Yay. And then that also goes with the second one that I got, which is This Shattered World, which is the second book in the Starbound trilogy. Um, again, I had the first one and the third one, but not the second one. I've been watching for it forever and it never keeps coming up. So I just said, forget it and went and bought it. It is a really stiff one though. Like this one's like one of those ones that you can just hold up. It doesn't do anything. It's really, really stiff. Where this one is nice and floppy and which should be nice and fun to read because it'll actually flop open. These ones feel nice and they look nice, but they're not easy to read. But now I have the complete, well not complete. I've got most of the, these ones. I'm missing the last two. But I do have this one complete so I can actually go read it now because I have been really loving Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff's books. So I thought it'd be good to branch out a little bit. This one I got locally here at our uh, military exchange and it is Nurse and Wires, the second one because they had it and I wanted it. So I got it and I kind of started reading the first one. I only got a few pages through it because I wasn't, I was kind of just, thumbing through it. I wasn't really reading it, but this is for when I actually start reading it. And I am looking forward to getting to it soon because this was just a duology. It's just these two books and they're about Iko and I love Iko. And so I definitely want to read them and finish off the Lunar Chronicles. So um, Renee, one of my lovely viewers, really, really likes Giant Days and suggested me to read these ones. And there's another one that she suggested I read too. So I went ahead and I grabbed one of the books that she suggested because I didn't want to buy a bunch of, of graphic novels when they weren't like on a really awesome sale. If they were like on a buy two, get one sale, then I'll buy more. But because this was just a everyday thing and I had room in my cart for one more thing before I hit my $35, I went ahead and bought this. This one I've already read. So this is Sight Witch. It's the prequel to Truth Witch and it's about the, um, 12 paladines and what happened to the sight witches and where um, my brain just farted out where Ryber came from so Ryber is in the other two books or she's she's in Truth Wish for sure I can't think if she's in Wind Witch or not um, they talk about her in Wind Witch but I don't think I actually see her in Wind Witch but this is about Ryber and I thought it was just going to be an amazing book to go with an amazing series and it was good i liked it but it's really short and it took me like four days to read it so that tells you right there that i wasn't truly invested in it but i did enjoy it and i am glad i have it too round out my series and then this one is all Haley and bookland's fault i blame her completely it's the brothers grim annotated copy i love brothers grim I have a copy somewhere of the Brothers Grimm Tales. <clears throat> I 
but it's not a special edition one. It's just a normal, you know, what you find at Barnes and Noble type of thing. This one has annotations in it. So these little things up here are annotations about the pieces. Plus they have pictures and I'm really excited about reading this. This is one of those ones where I think me and Chris are gonna read it slowly as we go through our other books. Almost every book I ever read is with Chris now. And um, me and her have just been bonded at the hip lately and we read all the same stuff. So this is on our list to read soon and she told me that she wanted to read them after I already got it and then I showed her my copy and now she's jealous. So I'm really excited about this one and I don't, and it's gonna take me a long time to read it but I think we're just gonna slowly start working our way through it and maybe in a year or so I'll actually have it been done. But now to move on to the boxes. So I have one uh, Barnes & Noble box and one book outlet box. The Barnes & Noble box I bought because I have problems. The book outlet box, I don't even know what's in it. There, I, I know I bought, I know some of the things I've bought lately, but I don't know very many of them. And so I cannot for the life of me remember what's in what box. And so, like always, the book outlet box will be a surprise for both of us. But I do know what's in the Barnes & Noble box because I'm not that out of touch with reality. And this one, Pretty much everything in here is a special edition. So I wanted to get the special editions of all of these books because I like having special editions. The first thing I got was Obsidio. Um, Renee said that she wanted to send me a, a copy of, of Obsidio with, um, that's signed by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, but it wouldn't match my other books. So if she still sends it to me, I will treasure it forever. But this one will actually match my other books. And it's got it's a special edition, which I heard is only a poster, which is right here, which makes me kind of sad. The part, reason I like the special edition so much is because they usually have like extra content and a poster, wah, wah. but it's still here. I'm still excited to read it after we're done with Throwing Glass. This is the next book I'm gonna pick up because I want to finish off the series which is chilling right here. So I can round it out and make it all pretty and yay. Now, like I said, pretty much everything in here is special edition for one reason or another. The next thing I got was Thunderhead, also a special edition. This one has um, 32 pages of chapter by chapter notes from the author, which is why I like getting these because a lot of times will have extra content in them that you don't get in normal books. Um, Again, I wanted to buy Obsidio and I had a coupon. Coupon said I had to spend $50, so I bought four books and then it brought my, my total way down. I ended up spending $40 on four books instead of $50 on four books, which was pretty good considering that most of these are brand spanking new books that just came out this month. This one has been out for a little while, but I saw that they had the special edition and I wanted to get it, so I got the special edition of it. So this is one of the books that I got because it was supposed to be really pretty. This is why I bought it. Because I also, I just mean, let me reiterate. This is why I bought it now versus later. This one is like a Hocus Pocus meets Practical Magic meets Water. It's called The Wicked Deep and it says the Swan Sisters live in Sparrow. Oregon in, 19, in 1822, Marguerite the oldest had a long auburn locks, full lips, and sharp jaw. Aurora, the middle sister, boasted soft waves of hair and a bright full moon eyes. And Hazel, the youngest, was the plainest of the three with small features and hair that twisted into a tumbling braid. Each was beautiful and each was misunderstood. A year later, the townspeople executed the Swan Sisters for crimes of witchcraft placing a curse over the town of Sparrow and a curse that has never been broken until now, perhaps. And so it sounded really, really interesting. And it's one of those books that I was really, really excited about. And this was why I, I've kind of, if you've seen my unicorn, my unicorn crate unboxing, I looked up to make sure that this one's one wasn't in there. Cause I wasn't sure which one I was gonna buy, if I was gonna buy this one or the one that was in the unicorn crate. And based off of the description, I knew I wasn't gonna get the same book twice. So I bought this one for myself and I bought it now because only the first run of books from what I understand will have this cover and I wanted this cover to go with this book because it's pretty and I want to read it anyways. So yay, win win. 
And finally, the last book in this box. I don't know why they add packing poof to it, but whatever. Is The Children of Blood and Bone. And again, this is a special edition. This one has exclusive map and an annotated chapter, which that'd be cool. I don't know which chapter is annotated, but that's cool. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, I know it has to do with magic and I've heard the description of it so many times and I honestly can't think of what it's about right now. I'm sure you guys could tell me what it's about because it's been everywhere. I know it has to do with magic, like magic is gone and she has to get it back or something like that. But I heard it's beautiful and I really want to read it. Um, one of the girls that I'm reading the throne of glass with she said that she's trying to read it right now, but she hasn't been able to make it very far into it because her brain is still <laughs> that her brain is still on the wrong books. So she's going to try it again later. And I'm going to try it again after I'm going to try it period after I <sighs> it's like the third book that I read after I'm finished throwing glass because I have a huge list compiled in the city. It's going to go first. So yeah, I'm excited about this one too. Now for the big box. So here is my, it's not the biggest I've ever had. It's a medium size, larger book outlet box. The other two book outlet boxes that I have floating around, one is gonna be huge and the other one is gonna be tiny. So um, yeah, I'm excited for those to come. It's gonna be a while. I'm hoping they didn't lose my box. I'm gonna be so sad because half the things in that box I can't get reget because they were like, things I never see on online and then they finally pop up there was like two copies and I'm like okay I'm gonna jump on it and just go grab them so I went and jumped on it and went and grabbed them and now they don't have tracking information for them and we don't know where the box, where the box is if it's still coming perfect I'll see it in a month if it's not still coming sad days. we'll find out soon enough all right <laughs> book on book box on lap so we have paper and we have books. All right, let's see here. So first we have the crowns game and I heard it's like night circus, but I've never read night circus, but I have night circus, but I heard this is really good. So I'm going to read it. Okay, cool. Awesome. And then we have the telling, which I stupidly bought two copies of. So this is going to my best friend, Ashley because she likes that kind of book and now I have two and I don't need two. Uh, the next one I have is My Lady Jane, which I've heard amazing things about it. And then the second companion, it's not, they're not sequels, they're just companions. Um, it's coming out soon. I've heard great things about that one too. And I have this on my Kindle because it was one of those specials where it was like a dollar on Kindle for a certain day. But I don't read my Kindle unless it's bedtime and I'm trying to sleep or if I'm traveling. So if I don't get to this beforehand, I'll probably get to it while I am traipsing the globe because I will only have my Kindle on me and things like this will actually get read. But in the meantime, I really wanted a copy of it because I really, really want to read it and I just I never remember the Kindle books. So this sitting at me, sitting here glaring at me will remind me to read it. And then I have We Are the Ants, which I don't know much about. Okay, this is about an alien abduction, but I heard it's really good and I've been curious and it was cheap and paperback. So I bought it. I seem to buy my unsure of books in paperback and my yes books in hardcover because I tend to go for the cheaper books if I'm not sure if I have an option. Sometimes I don't even have an option. All right, so I have a trilogy. I have Places of Lies, um, sorry, Palace of Lies, Palace of Mirrors, and then the other one is in here too. And Just Ella. And they are book one, book two, and book three. And if I remember right, this is a Cinderella retelling, which would make sense because it's Ella. And I was curious and they were literally 99 cents each. So yeah, I couldn't say no to that. So to go along with the Fallen Kingdoms number two book that I bought from Barnes Noble, I also have number four. I think there's six total. 
and um, I don't have the other two because the other two were only had hardcover and I'm collecting them in paperback right now and I don't know why. I'm one of those people that I'm fine if they're paperback. I'm fine if they're hardcover, but I hate it when I have some paperback and some hardcover. So I have paperback right now. And if I absolutely love these books and I can't get enough of them, I can go buy them here locally because uh, Guam is one of those weird areas where some of the books come in hardcover, but most of them come in paperback. Like if you go to Australia, they're all gonna be paperback for the, for the most part, unless it's like a special edition. Here is almost the same thing. And they have number five and number six at our local, at our local bookstore, which is tiny, by the way. If you haven't seen my little vlogs that have that bookstore in it, it is teeny tiny but they do have the series and they do have it in paperback. So I can always buy it if I need it sooner than later. Next, I have the third, third, the third book in the Heroes of Olympus series. I've been collecting these really, really slowly. So I have had one and two for a long time. I just now have three. I got four when I was in Hawaii and five is in the box that's lost in the abyss. So I will have all of them if that box ever shows up. And then I have one of the Kiss of Deception books. This is the Heart of Betrayal. The second one's in here too. I just don't know where. There it is, there it is. Okay, so we have the second and the third books. I have the first one again on Kindle. So we will see when that one gets read. I may have to go buy the first one too so that way I don't you know, do this to myself. But I had book two and book three. I've heard wonderful things about the series. I do have the first one. It's on my Kindle, which I will have to do like a, let me show you on my Kindle. And I plan to read while I'm in, while I'm in Europe before I leave. So expect that in like June. I will show you what's on my Kindle because it's hideously massive. I've got a lot of stuff on there. So next I have This Monstrous Thing by Mackenzie Lee. I was really curious because everyone hyped up um, Gentleman's Guide so much. My daughter loved it. I have not read it yet. It's on my to-do list. Like so many books that I have are on my to-do list. This one I thought would be kind of fun and this is like a Frankenstein, I think. But um, I thought it might be kind of fun to read something else from her because I've heard great things about the Gentleman's Guide and I mean, it could be good, right? I hope it's good. I was curious. And then I have um, two more books. So this one is The Great Hunt and this one is The Great Pursuit. And I think they're like, um, Red Riding Hood retellings, but I'm not positive. It says kill the beast and win the girl. Okay, so basically there's a beast that runs rampant through the city, town, kingdom and whoever can kill the beast can win the girl who is the princess so i remember thinking this sounded really good and i was excited about it and they were again like 99 cents for hardcovers hello yes i will take a book for that price and now the last book this is the book that set me over the edge um every book outlet purchase i have it's made for a reason. So either there's a book in there that only had one left that I was really excited about, or it's a really good sale. And this wasn't my Catalyst book, but I was eyeballing this one the whole time. I think the Catalyst was these in paperback, I think is what set me over the edge to buy it when I did. But this one had been sitting in my cart for a little while and I was really excited about it. And again, I blame this on Haley and Bookland because I didn't know this existed. I'm really, really excited about it because it goes with the rest of my collection. And it's Alice in Wonderland Decoded, which I am super excited about because I love Alice. I've loved her for years and I don't have a very big collection, but right here is my little tiny collection of Alice. And I thought this would make a really great join in with it. And there's all sorts of stuff about the facts and stuff behind it. And I'm just, looking forward to reading it because it says it says the full text of Lewis Carroll's novels with its hidden meanings revealed by David Bay and I am really looking forward to reading this it's got lots of little pictures in it and I'm 
like I said, I'm very excited. So, yes, hopefully I will actually get to go see um, the Jabberwocky tree while we're in London, but I'm having a problem figuring out how you get into it. Because apparently it's in uh, Christchurch and Oxford, and it is not the easiest thing to get to, but they do have like a high tea. It's like a, I can't eat anything on there because everything has like fish and dairy in it, but I so want to do it anyways, because hello, it's Alice, the Mad Hatter tea party by the Jabberwocky tree in the garden. I'm just like, can I please go there? So um, hopefully that will be part of a vlog that you'll see in like July, but we will see what happens when we actually get there. But yeah, that's it. That's my last book of my actually almost reasonably sized haul. It's still big. It's still bigger than it needs to be, but it's not as big as it could be. So I'm gonna go with reasonably sized book haul. Yay! Um, and I will give you another book haul when those book boxes ever show up. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.